Hi hey guys, um, right now I'm going to show you just some basic information about um, <coughs> classes and objects. As you can see, I've created a two classes. One's called animal, one's called dog. Um, and I'm also going to tell you a little, about, a little bit about abstract classes, but I'm going to save the more difficult and more detailed stuff for a different tutorial. But um, let's see, let's start off with the animal class. I have two methods in the animal class. Uh, one's called jump, and it just prints out the animal jumped. One's called what are you. And it's uh, and it prints out I'm an animal. And the key thing to look at here is that uh, what are you is static. And if you don't know what static is, um, let's see. Static means that you can call the method by just um, putting the class name first, like animal dot what are you. I'm an animal, which printed it out. But you can't do animal dot jump it'll give an error there because it's not um, not static in order to call jump you have to create a new animal object then you can jump the animal jumped and this is because um, Static methods are uh, unique for the entire class and for every single object of that class, while um, non-static methods are unique only for the object that is created from the class. If that kind of makes sense. And we also have our dog class, which uh, is pretty much the same thing. I have. Uh, bark, what is your name, what are you? Um, so in this case, we are going to create a new dog. And this time we're going to provide it with a name. And you see in our constructor dog, we uh, set the name that we provide, which is this, to a uh, just a private string name. So that when we call what is your name, it's just going to provide us the name. So it's going to say, I am Bob. Oops. Just one little thing. Add that. Didn't have that at the end. All right, I am Bob. And this is a good, uh, a good example of why we need non-static methods, because uh, for every dog we create is unique because it's going to have a different name, so this method is going to be unique. But um, the what are you is does not need to be unique because every single dog that we create from the dog class is going to be a dog. So what are you is always going to return I am a dog for every single one regardless of name. And then bark just, just, just does the dog barked, which can be used either way. I mean, it doesn't really matter. I could actually make it static and it wouldn't really make a difference. And, um, okay, so that's just basic things. And remember that if we have a private method, I'm just going to make it blank for now. Uh, you just have to remember that you can't call that private method because it's private. It is inaccessible due to its protection level. So uh, the methods have to be public that you call from the client, and it's just in this case, which is program.cs. Um, see, trying to remember other things. I should tell you guys. Uh, so private methods are basically used in other methods. They're kind of like helper methods. And all right, a little bit about abstract classes and inheriting classes. Um, you see this uh, notation right here. That means uh, dog inherits animal, which uh, means that dog has access to all the methods in animal, as well as all the methods in dog. Um, which means that I can call uh, jump. Even though jump is not in the dog class, because I inherited it from here. But I can't create a new animal and call, call bark. Because that is exclusive to the dog class, which the animal class does not inherit. See this little notation. 
and I'll save uh, casting and all those other things you can get into with objects for the next tutorial, but this is just a basic introduction to classes and objects uh, and methods in them. Uh, if you'd like to know anything more about C Sharp or Visual Studio 2008, uh, leave me a message, uh, go to my forum or website in the description, make sure to subscribe, Quackware signing out.